truly autonomous driving is one of the hardest technological problems to solve on planet Earth today for so many reasons. There's millions and millions of variables, no two roads are exactly alike, and the number of possible scenarios to navigate is almost infinite. And if you mess up, it could be seriously dangerous or cost someone their life. So the stakes are high, the difficulty is high, and yet there are some companies that are trying to solve it. Now, up until this point, I've never ridden in a Waymo or a Tesla RoboTaxi, just read about them. They're not available on the East Coast here, so I've mostly just seen a bunch of videos on social media and a bunch of headlines. Waymo has been operating since 2015, and they're doing driverless autonomous taxi rides in a few cities now. Austin, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, Phoenix, and LA. And then Tesla, despite recently announcing this whole cyber cab, They've actually started doing a super limited service of their own driverless taxis in regular Tesla Model Ys starting in Austin, Texas. The thing is, there's been a lot of chatter about both of these, kind of like as if they're sports teams, like you have to pick one of them to root for and then you have to root against all of the other ones. I definitely saw a small number of Tesla themed creators, which were the first ones to get access to the Tesla robo taxis. And they have been, how do I say this? Uh, they've been very forgiving of any shortcomings of the service. I've watched a handful of these videos. There's plenty of good stuff, but also plenty of weird stuff and odd maneuvers and phantom braking. There's even a video of somebody getting dropped off in an intersection and saying, It looks like we got dropped off right here at the corner. It's really something to see. And the cherry on top is since so many of them picked sides, they also have to hate Waymo and, and post videos of other Waymos doing bad things to sort of even it out. Now, like I said, I've never used either, and I know neither of them is perfect, but I quite like the idea of getting into a nice, quiet, empty car and just having it safely take me to my destination. That sounds kind of nice. So I was just curious how good these services actually are today. So I got on a flight and I flew down to that geo-fenced area of downtown Austin where there are both Waymos and robo-taxis to find out. For the Tesla robo-taxi, they have a super limited app that you need to be given access to. I got access, so now to try to learn as much as possible, I took a bunch of rides with both of these all day and took plenty of notes along the way. All right, Austin, Texas, it is hot out here, uh, but it's only gonna get hotter, so we might as well just jump right into it. It's time for my first Robo taxi ride. I've got the app on my phone and I'm in the geofence location, so let's do it. And so I guess let's just book a ride. Ride is on the way. There it is. It's a dark gray Model Y, like we expected. Put a blinker on. Okay, yeah. This is great, everything's normal. Robo taxi. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay. Before we start, if you don't mind, I'll just need to verify the uh, the robo taxi app, please. Oh, okay. Start ride. So we arrive in nine minutes. This is our route. So it's kind of nice that we get this uh, little screen at the bottom. We do have a pull over button. I don't think we'll need that. It's actually interesting because the car map has us going straight up to that intersection, but also it has its blinker on right now as if it's gonna turn left. So it's decided to go left. That seems fine. The map readjusts. It looks like it's one of those edge cases. It's time to see what it does. It puts the blinker on goes around. That was good. Uh, the visuals on the screen are pretty encouraging. I guess it's it's just because there's a, there's a chair in front of me, which is usually all I see during a ride anyway. So there might as well be a person in the chair, even though there is no person in the chair. Sitting in the left rear seat after a while, it just kind of felt like I got used to it. It felt like I was a passenger to a really short driver who wasn't saying anything. But as you noticed, there's obviously still a person in the car. This here is Tesla's safety monitor. Every Tesla RoboTaxi has one, and that person has a few special buttons they can press on the main display. One to pull over, 
and one to stop in lane in case they notice anything going wrong. They all also seem to keep a rather firm grip on the door opening button for some reason. Some people think it's another way to safely disengage FSD. Thankfully though, none of these buttons were needed to be pressed during any of my rides. It's pretty normal so far, right? Please exit safely. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks for Fundamentally, it went totally fine. The car showed up, we got in, it drove like a normal person would, it navigated the streets, and even some slightly odd scenarios very confidently. I did a few more rides around Austin just to various places, and in general, it was confident, it was impressive, and the pickups and drop-offs were mostly seamless as they would be with a human driver, except for one where it drove about 50 yards past me for some reason, instead of stopping next to me to pick me up. A human probably wouldn't have done that, it does kind of take away a little bit of the magic of it if there's still someone in the car. Like, we know it's not gonna be that way forever, but there is just a person in the front seat. It felt like a normal passenger ride, which I think is the bar. That's the success. But now it's time to try Waymo. All right, I've never ridden in a Waymo before. In Austin, it's built into the Uber app, so I'm going to try to call a Waymo by calling a Comfort Electric. Let's try it and you actually don't know if you're gonna get a Waymo or not until you get matched with one. There is a button you enable in your account once you land in Austin to allow you to get matched with Waymos, but it turns out it's still kind of by chance. So from my experience, it's about 80% regular drivers and then once or twice out of 10, you'll get a Waymo. Okay, it's not gonna walk up to me. That's fine. Unlock the car. Good to see you, Marcus. Mm -hmm. Just greet it. Start the ride. Heading to Austin Public Library. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. Happy Friday. Okay. So, same idea, but nobody in the car. So this front screen is just showing our arrival time, which makes sense, but then this bottom screen is closer to you and you can look at the actual visuals. And I can also play music or pull over. Or if I swipe over here, it looks like I can look at the route, change the temperature, all that other fun stuff. Oh, we're cooking. <laughs> this one's confidently navigating the same way. We just had a stop sign. We got a bit of a narrow road here. There's a car parked and just confidently drove around it, used its blinkers and everything. It took it easy and pulled to the size that the truck could go first. That was pretty good. You're here. Please make so, sure it's So, similar clear overall Don't driving style and confidence in the Waymo. The Waymo felt maybe 25% less aggressive or assertive and more cautious in general, but the, the Tesla was very similar capability-wise. And my rides weren't entirely perfect either. On one ride, when it got to my destination, which was right on the other side of the street, it blew right past it to try to do this huge eight minute route to turn around. Another thing I don't think a human driver would have done, but I did end up using the pullover button to end the ride early to avoid wasting those extra minutes and miles. Fascinating. So, okay, doing those experiences back to back was, I think, just was fascinating. It was eye-opening, very interesting. Uh, and, you know, say what you want about self-driving cars as a whole, because some people love them, some people hate them. But as a tech product, it is fascinating seeing these two different approaches to solving the same problem. So let's start with Waymo. Basically every Waymo so far has been a Jaguar I-Pace, an electric SUV that Hardly anyone actually buys, but they're decent, you know, solid room in the second row, all wheel drive, 246 miles of range on a full charge. But of course you can see they're all heavily modified with these sensors all over it, on top of the vehicle, on the front, on the back, many of them LIDAR to help the onboard computers sort of build a picture of the world around them while it's driving in real time. I've seen a couple estimates for how much it might cost to build a Waymo, 
Uh, as far as I can tell, there is no official number that they're giving anyone, but you know, clearly it's significantly more expensive than just your standard Jaguar I-Pace. And it also almost completely covers the sunroof. So you might not even know an I-Pace has a sunroof if you've been riding in Waymos this whole time because of all that hardware above you. Now, as a passenger, am I fine with a bunch of extra hardware and maybe more of an eyesore to potentially be more safe? Yeah, of course, but you'll see where I'm going with this when I talk about the Tesla RoboTaxi in a bit. One thing that struck me though is it does feel as a customer, like the Waymo actually is a bit further along in like the overall experience of, of a ride. And I, what I mean by that is it just feels like it's a little bit more well thought out in some aspects because they've clearly had more stuff happen. So from the placement of the unlock button and the open trunk button in the app, so the car stays locked for anyone else and nobody can get in the car if they didn't call it. You know, the stickers on the steering wheel, because you know confused people have probably tried to touch the wheel all the time. And when I got in the car, there's this voice that greets me by name and explains what's going on and how it's an autonomous ride and I'm not being recorded. The cameras around the car are just for driving, et cetera, et cetera. And the UI on the screens is nicely laid out, little stuff. And then obviously there's no one in the car, which is huge, especially if the whole point of someone opting into a service like this is to not have to deal with people. The Tesla RoboTaxi, on the other hand, well, it's just a Tesla Model Y with some decals on it. And this is really interesting. This is actually my first time riding in this new refreshed version of the Model Y. And yeah, they're great. It's pretty obvious why they've been one of the most popular vehicles on earth. The suspension in this generation is better than last time. It's quiet inside. You can actually see out the sunroof and they've got over 300 miles of range on a charge for pretty cheap, which to me feels just more modern and obviously less of an eyesore and clearly cheaper, which is potentially more scalable without all the extra sensors on it. And you know, Tesla software in the car is really good too. I could go in and play YouTube or Spotify on that back screen or any number of the other media services if I wanted to. But also Tesla was way more reliant on this safety monitor employee sitting in the passenger seat. Like when I got in the car, it's not a voice from the computer. The person actually asks to see the app to verify that I was actually the one that called the car. And clearly that would be the person to tell me not to touch the steering wheel if I was to do anything stupid. But then, yeah, as a passenger, you're just kind of sharing a ride with another person, just choosing for the person to not be holding the steering wheel for the sake of helping them beta test this service, which feels a little more silly. Funny enough, Tesla, like the other day, as of when I'm recording this, started testing in like a new San Francisco geofenced area, but they're not legally allowed to test without someone in the driver's seat. So they're just running Tesla Model Ys around with someone in the driver's seat ready to take over, but they'll enable FSD. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. Either way, as a, as a newly experienced rider in the driverless cabs of each of these services and, and generally an optimist about new technology, here's my take. So exciting new technologies always follow, I've talked about it before, this curve of like a really steep improvement at the beginning and then a tapering off when it's good enough for the masses and doesn't make massive leaps anymore. And these, Tesla and Waymo are both really early at the beginning. Maybe Waymo's a little further ahead, but they're so early that they're in small geofenced areas, in select cities, and not on highways. And some of them still have a person in the car. Both of them definitely have remote support options in case anything goes wrong. But the point is they're both insanely early on this curve, which is exciting, but they're also both very cautious. I think the dream of driverless cars successfully sharing the road with human drivers is fascinating, even if it's only a step on the way towards every car being autonomous. Driving wise, both the robo taxis and the Waymos that I took performed admirably. They dealt with pedestrians and lights and other cars and construction vehicles. And that's just in my one day of testing. But just because nothing bad happened to me doesn't mean nothing bad happens. Trust me, there's lots of videos of both Tesla RoboTaxis and Waymos doing some stupid stuff. So the real challenge for these companies is scaling up that curve without pushing too far. Like as far as I'm concerned, it's a good thing that both companies are being as safe as possible. Waymo is using tons of expensive LiDAR sensors all over their car to try to be as safe as possible. Good. Tesla paying safety monitors to ride along inside every driverless car with a vice grip on a kill switch on the door handle, good. Like there are so, so, so many edge cases that these cars will encounter as they rack up the millions of miles of driving 
construction, closed lanes, busted roads, sloppy road markings, weird signs, flooding, snow-covered roads, like anything is possible. It's like how there's a brand new sentence typed into Google every day. Like these cars are going to encounter brand new driving situations that no human driver has ever encountered before. And they're gonna have to navigate them effectively and cautiously and safely. That's hard especially for a non-human driver. It's funny, I was talking to an Uber driver because one of the many rides I took in Austin that day was with a regular driver. And he was talking about how there's, uh, at certain intersections in the city of Austin, Texas, there's certain sensors that you have to drive over and trip just the right way to get the light to change. And Waymo's miss that sensor all the time and then just sit there blocking traffic. And he's had to drive up and trip the sensor for it so that it could relieve the pressure of traffic. Crazy stuff. You'd never know. My hope is just that both these companies and any others joining this challenge for that matter, try to scale this curve as you know, safely and methodically as possible. Like I've heard all the talk on Twitter about how, oh, maybe Tesla without all those expensive LiDAR sensors will be able to scale faster because the cars are cheaper. Maybe, but if it comes at the expense of any safety, doesn't matter, it won't matter. Like if you can imagine if there's even one bad incident or if someone gets hurt, you can see the headlines coming from a mile away, how far that sets them back. So it's easy to make fun of, but the geofenced areas and the safety drivers are actually a good thing. And I don't think either of these companies should be in any particular rush to be the first to drop these training wheels, but they're also businesses that are in competition with each other. So on the upside, you know, both of these technologies are clearly pretty amazing. You can tell just by asking someone who grew up more than about 40 years ago what they think about self-driving cars and how they actually work. Super impressive, super complicated, very cool. Now on the downside, you know, people on Twitter famously like to pick sides like sports teams. Like if you like one of them, then you must dislike the other one. Like you have to root for one to succeed and the others to fail. It's, I, I kind of think RoboTaxi versus Waymo Twitter is worse than iPhone versus Android ever was, but, Look at where we are now. iPhone and Android, they compete, but they also kind of coexist and push each other to be better constantly. And I don't think that's such a bad future here either. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.